ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدا وخلق منها زوجها وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان خير الكلام كلام الله جل في العلا واحسن هدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار we know brothers and sisters in regards to dua that we are in most need of our lord tabarak wa ta'ala in these times and we know that dua is one of the most beneficial cures if not the most beneficial and the enemy as far as evils of trials and tribulations supplication wards it off and treats it and it might perhaps prevent it as ibn al-qayyim mentions and it can even if the trial takes place cure it and be a reason for its treatment and for a means of its healing as the dua is the weapon of the believers a lot of us is heedless of this fact as we know and see today given a short and brief reminder as we live in this world and we are faced with constant tests and trials and tribulations day and night we battle with ourselves the inner struggle with our desires and with our worldly affairs and the fitness of our wealth and our children and our spouses and like we said the human being as ibn al-qayyim mentions just being human is a fitness just being merely human is fitna just of what it takes place of sometimes you're up sometimes you're down sometimes you're happy sometimes things happen where it changes the mood being a human being in itself is a trial and a test from Allah due to all these factors that we mentioned doesn't it not mean rather it should come to one's mind that he needs his lord to better go to Allah and it's not a time when you do not need a law rather in every second you need your lord to better go to Allah supplication in which one invokes Allah to better go to Allah not only asking Allah to aid you in your religious affairs you are desperately and constantly asking Allah to aid you in making proper decisions in your life in general not just in your religious affairs when you make dua to Allah which will give just one example of so many examples that come in the authentic sunnah of the messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wassalam to let you know how comprehensive and beautiful the religion of Islam is and how beautiful salafia is where you're not asking your lord like we said to be entrusted with our affairs religiously we want Allah to give us tawfiq and success to make good decisions not only religiously but worldly allow those affairs to take place and allow me to have good company and people around me 
where you protect me from people who want evil from me, even though I, even though I do not know their intent. These are all things that only Allah Taala can protect you from. Protect you from the evils of human beings. Protect you from the evil of yourself. And protect you from the evil of the shayateen that you cannot see. Which is a constant struggle and battle daily and in and out every night. Which lets us know and pushes you to let you know that you will always need your Lord. And will, there's not a blink of, eye, blink of an eye or a split of a second where you do not need Allah to barakah with the as we know, Ya Ma'ashul Ikhwa, we battle and struggle with ourselves. We try to protect our families from the violent streets, which is another trial and test. None of us want to wake up in the morning and hear that our child or our son was murdered. Or that our child or one of our children from our community now have been shot down. These are affairs and fears that all of us wake up that one day maybe that can be me. Maybe that will be the victim of so many other victims out here, I'm sure, was not expecting that someone in their family died, but they did. Sometimes it gets hard making a sound decision, like we said. Islam is complete and we have the answers and the cures by the fuddle of Allah and His bounties and His blessings. However, we have to now reach out and to attempt to put forth our utmost effort in what? Trying to attain the help of Allah by way of supplication. How foolish are we not to seek help from the one who created the heavens and the earth? Our greatest weapon, like we said, brothers and sisters, is supplication. It's not the gun. It's not the gun. It's not the money. It's not the neighborhood or our education. Wallahi, Allah has said in his book, وَمَن يَتَّقِ اللَّهِ يَجَعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا and I've heard an Ibn say this when I was overseas. I don't care if you was in the most wretched society within. Everyone was probably involved in some type of criminality. If you fear Allah, Allah will make you a way out from that and he will protect you. Even if everyone in the mission in that area were all inclined towards wickedness and corruption. And they conspired to what? Plot against you. If Allah wants to protect you, you will be protected. That's the antiquad and the belief we learn, but however we lose sight and track of this focus. So we say, Ya Ma'ashul Ikhwa, it's not the gun, it's not the money, it's not the neighborhood, it's not the education, even though those things, like we said, are requested in times. However, our heart should be totally relying on Allah and connected with Him as a means of a foundation first. Believing and knowing He can save us. We get caught up, as we say, often with the excuse of trying to tie our camel, forgetting about Allah and the different type of legislated means that he's made to, as a way to move you out of that situation or take you out of that endeavor or that hardship or those adversities that you're facing in your life in that moment in time. It's the supplication and the worship constantly and correctly and taking at the same time, like we said, those permissible actions, which no doubt is connected with the affair of tying our camel. Don't leave off du'a, which we'll give an example right now, how many times do we forget before we go to bed at night, before you leave out the house, before you get in the car, before you're on the road, or when you're in the road, riding in the car, or what have you, or even when you enter the masjid, even after fajr. Rather, I think in these days and times, we are more in the most need of those supplications that we're supposed to make in the morning and the evening, especially in these days, because it's a means of protection and a fortification from all these possible affairs that might be a reason for your destruction. Those supplications that you make in the morning time and in the evening after also is your fortification. It is a means of protection. And you're asking Allah to be with Ta'ala to what? Give you aid and protect you from all the different possible evil and wickedness that might affect you or be a reason for your demise or a reason for your destruction. These du'a, ikhwa, which we'll just give. One instance in the second khutbah, walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.
الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدمان إلا على الظالمين وشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له الملك الحق المبين وشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله سيد ولد آدم الأجمعين صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه الطيبين الطاهرين على مر الأيام والليالي والشهور والسنين أما بعد Then we go on to say Just one example of how comprehensive and these are the supplications that we should be most diligent in memorizing and saying in our prayers. Starting like we said the greatest of supplications that was revealed that was revelation revealed upon the final and prophet to all humanity the greatest messenger alayhi salatu wasalam. There's a narration where it says it's coming to the But the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said in the authentic hadith, this supplication, Allahumma a'inni wa la tu'in alay wa ansurni wa la tansur alay wa ankurli wa la tankur alay wa ahdini wa yassir li al-huda wa ansurni ala man bagha alay رب جعلني لك شكارا لك ذكارا لك رهابا لك مطواعا لك مخبتا إليك أواه منيبا ربي تقبل توبتي واغسل حوبتي وأجد دعوتي وثبت حجتي وسدد لساني واهد قلبي واصل سخيمة صدري This of grace or this great supplication with a message of Allah Sallallahu to show how the authentic sunnah is the greatest of supplication. Because it's the furthest of what? One will fall into of transgressing in dua or saying something in supplication that might be a means for its rejection. So those affairs you'll find of the authentic sunnah is the furthest, rather they are the most perfect. When the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu said in this tremendous dua, when the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu said, O oh Allah, aid me. Do not aid against me. Give me victory, do not give victory against me. La tunsurni wa la tunsur alayhi. Plot for me, meaning of those who is around. Plotting against me, plot against them. Wa mkurli wa la tamkur alayhi. Do not plot against me. Guide me and facilitate for me guidance. Let's just stop at that first part. That in itself would take maybe 20 to 30 minutes just to what? Just to explain how comprehensive that dua is. But we'll do a light supplication, a compilation of clarifying it. In these brief minutes, be in the Allah to be the Allah, the Messenger of Allah in this authentic, this authentic supplication. Meaning, seek. You're asking Allah, Rabbi, a'inni. O Allah, aid me. Meaning, I'm seeking from you that assistance, that tawfiq. Now listen to this. Tawfiq, so I could be obedient to you. So I could carry out and actualize the worship of you in a manner in which will please you. I'm seeking from you aid upon, now listen to this part. All of my affairs, religiously and worldly, and in the hereafter. And also seeking your help against those who are enemies who plot against me. Give me and aid me from your help and your tawfiq. Do not aid against me. Do not make your help against those who try to now prevent me. Prevent me from worshiping you. From them, now listen to this. From them is myself of what I struggle with, of the evil within myself. From the temptation of myself. From the laziness of myself. From my inclinations of what I want to be in, in affairs that are comfortable all the time. Aim me against myself as far as helping me overcome it. 
that which an affair pertaining of the evils in which yourself constantly commands you to do evil. Also give me aid and do not give me aid against myself from the shayateen, from the human beings and the unseen shayateen. Give me victory. Then I'm asking you for that aid. Aiding me in all of my affairs. And some of them say the meaning, give me victory over myself that commands me to do evil. And also for the most, those who are the most enmity of those who are my enemies, who display and manifest to me that what? That evil. Protect me from them, of those who plot against me. And you distance me from them. Because we know the nafs, and also we do not know those whose intents or have ulterior motives who are around you that want to just see you fall. You don't know. We have slick shayateen out here with decorated speech, acting as if they're your friend, but they're anticipating your downfall. You want Allah to constantly keep you and protect you from all of those from the shayateen, all of those who are envious, all of those who do not want good for you, all of those who are, do not want any type of good for you in your religious affairs, or your worldly affairs. This supplication is comprehensive for all of them. Doesn't all of us as human beings need that protection? Don't you need aid upon yourself from what yourself tells you to do? Drugs, alcohol, backbiting, being with girls, especially with all the different possibilities and means of these satanic traps out here of social media, of being constantly bombarded with fitting and things that arouse your desires, constantly. Don't you need Allah to aid you and safeguarding and protecting yourself from falling into something? Wallahi, brothers, if Allah leaves you to yourself, if he leaves us to ourselves, you're we are all destroyed. The supplication it says, For what also, ya Allah, unsunami wa la tamsur alayhi, wa mkurli wa la tamkur alayhi, plot for me. And I think this is self-explanatory. Plot for me and do not plot against me. Meaning those who want evil and intended. Making dua to Allah to protect you. Reciprocating of what they want for evil. That Allah is giving it and plotting against them. <laughs> Guide me and facilitate for me guidance. Facilitating for me guidance in my worldly affairs and religious affairs. Meaning, oh Allah, I'm entrusting you for all of my affairs. Everything in my life. Not my not just my obedience, not just my uprightness. Also making proper decisions, even in your worldly affairs, in your businesses. Because we know a lot of people get tied up in business. Until it either busies them from the worship of Allah, or we know a lot of people resort to haram and unlawful means to attain that wealth, or they lose their religion while they're involved in attaining it. How many people we see that Allah raises them worldly, but you see their religion going slowly and slowly away from them? How many examples do we see in this? The more Allah increases their wealth, the more their religion goes away from them. You're asking Allah to protect you from all of these affairs. Allow me to make proper decisions when selecting a spouse. You're asking Allah to be entrusted with all of your affairs. Allow me to keep my eyes open and focused on the goal without being sidetracked from people who want to busy me or want to distract me. All of this, we need Allah for these affairs. Is there anyone that's an exception from this? From all of what we mentioned, and that's just the first part of du'a, and we'll continue the next part next week. Be idni lajalul This is just one example of the numerous examples of the beautiful supplications of the Messenger of Allah, alayhi salatu wasalam, where we need to take time to memorize. So, like we said, it will be a means of fortifying ourselves against all the different possibilities of wickedness and evils that might be a mean for our demise. But this is what we need in these days. And this is our greatest weapon. It is totally relying on Allah and believing and knowing He can save us. Making dua, worship, excuse me everyone, 
One being constant and steadfast, Apollo was correct, is also what you're asking Allah. They are imperative in these days. One should not see themselves leaving off dua, especially these days. And may Allah give us these, give us the tawfiq and these affairs to be what? Actualized in our lives. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Wa subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Wa shadu an la ilaha illa ant. أستغفرك وتوب إليك وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين وأقيم الصلاة